America has political elites, Hollywood elites, academic elites, and media elites. I'm not a member of the media elite. I was when I was a consumer reporter, bashing business. Then I won lots of Emmy awards. But once I started criticizing government, I lost my elite status. I know, I host my own TV show, that sounds elite, but the real elites in American media are the majority that lean left. The best example of it is the New York Times, the so-called paper of record. Not that many people actually read this today. Katy Perry has 77 times more Twitter followers than the New York Times has readers, but the Times still matters because TV hosts copy this, and politicians read it, and assume it tells the truth. People assume this story was true. A huge top-of-the-front-page expose of nail salons that ran two days, claiming salons abused their workers. The very next day, the state's head politician announced government would fix things. Today we're starting a multi-agency effort to help women who work in nail salons. Why? Why? Because the Times ran a so-called expose. That allows the political elites to say, government will come to the rescue. So what's wrong with the elite media pointing out a problem and politicians stepping in to fix it? Well, two things. First, politicians' extra laws rarely fix things. They often make problems worse. And second, in this case, the Times expose was very misleading. Reasons Jim Epstein learned that when he re-reported the story, talking to the very same people that the Times reporter talked to. And what'd you find out? Well, I find that the Times had uh, essentially grafted a story of mass exploitation onto an industry where nothing of the sort is going on. The writer, Sarah Neer, said manicurists are routinely underpaid and exploited. Well, actually, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, manicurists in the New York area make about a little more than $9 an hour in base wages. And then they also make sometimes as much of that in tips, um, sometimes much more. Um, you know, they, they do fairly well, and they're skilled workers. And, and nobody's forcing them to work there, right? Presumably, this is a better option than their alternative. That's right. It's a better option than the alternative, but it's actually not a bad option because you can do pretty well as a manicurist. Well, usually when the New York Times smears little businesses, they just take it. But lately, some nail salons held protests in front of the Times building. This nail salon owner happens to be married to a former New York Times reporter. And I worked there for 24 years. I think in this instance, their lack of judiciousness led them to do serious injury to the reputation of people. I, I think he cares about now because he knows those people. He's, he's one of them. His wife is one of them. Well, Richard Bernstein spent 22 years at the New York Times. He's also a longtime reader of Reason, so he's actually one of the good eggs. Um, but, uh, you know, it is sort of amazing that whenever you read an article about a topic that you actually know about, it never looks anything like what you know, so that's pretty telling. All right, so Nir interviewed these workers. You re-interviewed them and just heard different things? Well, I, pretty much everyone I spoke to said that they'd been misquoted. Uh, Stossel Show producer Ricky Ratliff also went to the protest and interviewed some of the salon workers. And many were upset because the Times claimed some salons pay workers just 10 bucks a day. My boss paid me $10 one hour. It's not $10 a day. He told us a liar. That's not true. Sarah Nia said that we only pay $10 a day for the worker. It's untrue. We pay $10 for the trainee, not for the worker. This is on this paper, you can see right here. You pay $800 to $1,000 a week. They stand by their story because they're afraid of, of new immigrants being exploited. But it's totally distorted. Exploiting our employees. If that is true, which we know is totally fake. If it's true, so we were close to the shop a long time ago before the story came out because we know no one will come to work for you. What does she mean, no one would come to work for you? 
Um, nail manicurists are actually skilled employees who have a good deal of bargaining power. Um, and that's because these nail shop owners are constantly looking for, you know, good employees. They're putting all of these ads in the Asian language classifieds because they're trying to find people and they're constantly losing employees. So most nail salons are struggling to attract workers. The Times later bragged they got politicians to act. We have a capitalistic system that can abuse workers who are vulnerable. The power of the New York Times is that it has the ear of government. The New York Times runs a story. The very next day, Governor Cuomo reacts. No independent investigation. So why do they have this attitude? The underlying view is that these people must not know what's best for them. They're being exploited. They're not making rational choices based on the alternatives presented to them. We They're know, poor immigrants. We know better. We're we protect. know better. We need to, working with government, uh, um, intervene and make their lives better for them. But the result is raising prices, eliminating some jobs, the result, putting some out of business. The result has been that the nail salon industry has stopped growing. The very people who the Times claims to be so concerned with can no longer find jobs in the industry.